Hello, welcome to another episode of Investigators in Cars Drinking Coffee. I'm your host, Mark Mernan. As usual, I'm accompanied by my wife and partner, Wendy Strom Mernan, who is manning the camera today. Wendy, say hello. Hello, everyone. Okay, thanks for holding the camera. We are doing some traveling today, and we're going to be flying on an airline that we use regularly, uh, and we will be carrying a firearm to our location. Uh, so we thought we'd just take the opportunity to show you how we do it, what's required, what the laws and regulations are behind it. Uh, if you have ever thought about it, if you are a responsible gun owner, I want to get, bring your attention to two things. Number one, know the laws where you live and know the laws about where you're going. There's a third thing, and that is knowing how to transport a firearm legally. Now, if you have concerns about the difficulties of it, may I tell you this, every airline, every airport in the country usually has hundreds if not thousands of lawfully, um, lawfully owned and transported firearms going through their terminals every single day. You are not alone, you're not the only one. So, let me kind of go through the process here. First, I want to draw your attention to the TSA requirements, tsa.gov, and I'll include a link down below as to what they require, what you may and may not carry, and how you are to carry it. The first thing you'll find that, that I've got for you here today is a, a Pelican hardcover case. It's a Pelican 1200. I've had this for several years. It allows for cutouts to accommodate the firearm that you'll be carrying, a couple of extra magazines. Rounds of magazines, rounds of ammunition are contained in this cardboard box. This is fine to carry on aircraft on, uh, once you've checked it in. Again, this is for checked baggage only. No firearms, no ammunition. I don't even take magazines with me. I'll take maybe a holster in my carry-on baggage, but nothing related that can be to, be, uh, to a firearm uh, in, the, uh, in the actual carry-on bag. Now, here's the process. We've got our hardcover case. We've got some locks here, which I'll be applying in just a moment. We've cleared the magazine. We've emptied the, ma the, uh, the firearm. The magazine is out. You can see that there are no firearms, no uh, uh, cartridges or bullets in uh, the uh, uh, firearm itself. And I have got this handy device, which right here, uh, which shows that the, that the uh, firearm, that the chamber is empty here. So I'm gonna install this right here, kind of swing this back very carefully. And now I have an indicator to the check-in uh, uh, ticket agent that the firearm is empty. Now there are three things that you must know, three steps that we'll be going through today on transporting a firearm safely on an airline. Number one is the check-in process, okay? Number two, uh, not just, I'm sorry, the packaging. Number two uh, that we're going to be doing is the check-in process, and number three is the retrieving. So the uh, declaration, the pack, the packing, the declaration at the counter, and uh, the retrieval at the other side at your uh, at your airport. So the firearm is empty. We have an empty indicator right there. We've got rounds of ma uh, ammunition here in a cardboard box. We've got two empty. Ma we've got magazines right there, which I'm placing ma uh, the uh, full box of ammunition over, and I've got locks. Now mine are TSA approved. I've had questions in the past whether you need a T whether TSA locks are sufficient, and according to the TSA website, uh, TSA recognized locks are perfectly acceptable. So go ahead and use those. I take it, I close this. Actually, I have an extra magazine which I'm going to throw in here as well. I'm going to close it, make sure it's secured there, and then I'm going to lock it right here before I place it in my travel bag in my suitcase. Now this is a hard sided container, which is what the uh, law requires. And I'll put this one here. I know all the combinations of it here, so I'll have those ready to go when I get there. And I've got this that I'm going to use to attach to my bag once I get to the airport. All right, so this is going to go into the suitcase right here. Go ahead and slide it back to the position I took it out of just a few moments ago. And then we will secure it. If the bag will cooperate. Get in there, you little devil. Okay, fantastic. There we go. I'm going to shove this shut. Give myself a little bit of packing room here. Boom. And I'm going to just uh, carry it right there with a little TSA lock. Make sure that it is in there. And, of course, it's not cooperating with me right now, but you get the picture. I also carry these with me as well, one for the TSA.gov as well as the airline I'll be flying on. And these are the regulations that you'll need to know when you check in at the counter. This specifies the method of carry, the process of declaring the firearm uh, and retrieving the firearm at the other side. I just keep these with me. And oftentimes what I'll do is I will have them with me 
when I'm meeting with the ticket agent, so the ticket agent and I both know that I'm aware of the industry of the airlines rules as well as the TSA process. So we'll pick up on this once we get back to the, uh, down to the airport. We'll kind of walk through the process afterwards and give you an update. Thanks so much. See you in a few minutes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, we're back here. We have made it uh, through the airport uh, safely. We're now, our firearm went through very, very quickly. Um, it's become, uh, it, we're, where we're at here, as I said before, there are thousands, hundreds if not thousands of firearms lawfully transported um, every day through every major airport in the country, except probably in those areas that aren't gun friendly. <clears throat> and uh, so we are traveling to a place that is, I said, firearm friendly. And uh, we, we carry it essentially not because we're nuts or crazy, but we just have a, an awareness of, um, uh, of our personal security. We certainly are not going to be... Uh, we're still drinking coffee. Still drinking coffee. Still, we're not in a car, but we're soon to be in a plane. Uh, but I think the process of carrying a firearm is uh, mysterious if you've never done it. Um, if you are a responsible firearms owner, please don't feel hesitant to explore the TSA website, um, explore the, um, uh, the flight, uh, the airline um, the airline site, which has information about sporting equipment. If you scroll down, you'll find a, a section for how to uh, transport firearms, what the individual airline rules are. And then once we're at the airport, go ahead. Question. Yeah. Now, when it comes out of baggage claim, does it come on the little thing that goes the carousel, or no. do you have to go to the office and pick Good it up? Good question. No, oh, okay. it's not supposed to be placed on the carousel oh, okay. where anybody else can uh, just grab it. It's set aside into uh, near the baggage claim office for the particular airline or for the uh, or wherever the uh, uh, claim uh, baggage claim. Uh, trolley that you're on. Uh, so you just look for it over there or ask somebody for it. You have a, they give you a tag for the special, uh, they give you a baggage claim ticket and then they give you a special uh, um, uh, tag for the uh, noting that's uh, supposed to be special handling. So we'll find out when we get over to our destination. And you said that this airport was very easy. This airport was because they, they have so many. In the basement. No, no. Yeah. A lot of times you have to accompany the TSA agent, but it's, I think some of the larger airports they have so many of them yeah. that the ticket agent just put it on the. Um, he marked the bag, and Mark had a special tag on it there. If they have an issue, the airline notices us through a. So kind a, of a routine thing. Almost, a very routine, point, particularly yeah. where we're at here in South Florida, where they have a, a lot, a lot of firearms, a lot yeah. of people with carry permits. So they didn't I, interrogate you. No, or? no, they didn't no. beat me up with a hose this time. That was last time. Oh. oh yeah. But uh, let me just make you aware, too, that if you are flying, uh, if you are carrying a firearm and traveling, then you really need to be subscribing to or be a member of the uh, couple Gun Rights Association, such as the NRA, the National Rifle Association. Uh, we've been long-term members of that, and also the uh, U.S. Concealed Carry Association, USCCA, but I think it's usconcealedcarry.com, yeah. uh, has information on uh, what uh, the particular reciprocity laws, if you have a carry permit in Florida, you got to uh, know that stuff. you got to know that yeah. stuff. That is just part of being a responsible firearms owner, and she's responsible. I'm a little irresponsible, <laughs> but she's very responsible. But uh, we know those things, we study those things, we have an uh, insurance policy uh, for uh, potential defense uh, issues. Uh, but we just take advantage of, uh, of our legal right to uh, carry and we carry responsibly. So we're looking forward to a very safe and uh, fun uh, break from the routine. Yes. So uh, we look forward family. to yeah, seeing family. <laughs> Hopefully they'll see us. Yes. But uh, maybe thanks. Maybe some autumn leaves. Maybe some autumn leaves. Here, my wife is dressed actually like autumn oh, or something. I know. <laughs> We're dressed. It's 100 degrees out here, but hopefully it won't be that way when we get there. Yes. Anyway, thanks for joining us here in Investigator in Cars, and we will uh, see you next time. Bye. All right, this can kind of close the loop on our uh, firing, uh, traveling with a firearm video. Here is our. Uh, Bag securely uh, arriving here. You see the GACAGBT tag, tag right there. And uh, let me just pause this for a second.